Hey. 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 So I'm trying to build the baddest, most thockiest gaming keyboard ever. So what switch will make that happen? Um, you do realize that keyboard sound is like a combination of a lot of different things, right? Uh-huh. That means no one thing will make the keyboard thocky or clacky. Uh-huh. Yeah, so a keyboard sound comes from a combination of like the keyboard, the keycaps, the switches, the plate, even like the foam inside it. So you kind of have to look at the whole picture. Hmm. Yeah, man, I think I got it. So what switch will make that happen? Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Overall, I feel like many of us in this keyboard hobby looks for that magic bullet, usually a switch that will shape the entire sound of the keyboard. However, as Scott mentioned before, a keyboard sound profile is a combination of multiple different things. Some of these keyboards may sound higher pitched, as many of us describe as clack, while others will sound deeper or also known as by the word thock, and some are in between. The wild thing is that some keyboards will thock with one type of switch and another will clack with the same one. It's pretty crazy, right? Well, it's because all the different things playing in a chord inside the keyboard. First, you have the keyboard itself. The case materials, the design plays a part in shaping the sound. Then you got the plate design and the plate material. Yes, switches do play a big part in this as well. And keycaps and their profile and the materials also has a big impact. Finally, so does foam or any other filler that's inside the keyboard. In order to demonstrate this phenomenon and to show that pretty much any keyboard can be tuned to display some type of clacky or thocky sound behavior, we will be using this, the Windex 65. I'm sure you have seen this board from the original Windex or from other reviewers that had a chance to show you what the Windex 65 is all about. Today, rather than going about the basics of the keyboard, I want to show you how the Windex 65 can be tuned and mounted to be either clacky or thocky. And you can pretty much do this with any other board as well. So, a little bit about this board. The Windex 65 is the second rendition of the original Windex from Win Studios. It comes in this nice little box and comes with a whole slew of different stuff like palm plates, a PCB, a huge package of foam, and obviously the keyboard itself. I could say that of all the recent keyboards I have tested, this is probably one of the wildest given the bright orange color and the sharp angular lines. It really stands out from the rest of the minimalistic designs that, and, and I really welcome this board to my ever-growing collection as well. Plus, this brass weight is executed so cleanly, with just a small sliver of it visible from the outside. The Windex 65, like the Wind X, is a gasket-mounted keyboard, so it should have a naturally dampened sound, um, and also a dampened type feel as well. However, since the point of this video was to show you how I can tune this Windex 65 to be either clacky or thocky, I needed to swap the parts in and out, and I ran into an issue. My kit came with a solderable PCB, so how will I swap out switches if I have to solder and desolder it? Well, I can't. At least not easily. So, I got creative and I did this. I used Milmax sockets. Essentially, you solder in these little sockets into the solder PCB, and then it converts it into a hot swap PCB. It then pretty much works very similarly to the KO hot swap socket as well. So now that's done, let's get started by trying to build a clacky setup first. So many of us use the word clacky for higher pitch sounding keyboards. For that, I'll be using parts that airs on high frequency sounds. So first of all, we're gonna get started by using all of the foam provided. I'm actually going to explain the reasoning behind this more technically coming up. But a sneak preview, more or thicker foam actually creates more clack. For the plate and PCB as well, I'll be using all of the foam provided, excluding the IXPE sheets. More on that later as well. For the switches, something clacky, right? And for that, we're going to be using the Aqua Jelly Whites. Out of many switches I have tried, I feel the new Aqua Jelly White and the black are pretty clacky and higher pitch, so this will be perfect for this clack build. And finally, the keycaps. We'll be using the EPBT Double Shot ABS in the pink on black colorway. Of many of the premium cherry profile keycaps I have tried, I feel that the EPBT Double Shot ABS have a tendency to be more clacky. Not really in a bad way, but the way EPBT handles their double shot process is a bit different from the likes of GMK and does produce a more higher pitch sound. So given all that, let's see how this sounds, shall we?
Yup, as expected, this is one crazy clacky build. Nothing wrong with clacky, especially if that's the sound signature you are looking for. But I want you to keep this in mind in terms of how it sounded, because, well, let's go into a little bit of science behind sound, and specifically, foams. So in order for us to understand what foam does to keyboards and its sound, we need to first understand what sound is. So first of all, sound is a form of energy, more specifically it's a mechanical wave. And the pitch of sound that we hear from high or low is described by the frequency of the sound wave you're hearing. For example, the sound that we interpret as clack is a high pitch sound created by high frequency waves. This type of wave is high speed and also is very low penetration type of wave that travels fast, bounces around fast, but is also low wavelength and is not very good at going through surfaces or other media. The second type of sound that we interpret as thok is a low pitch sound created by a low frequency wave. This type of wave is lower in speed and high penetration type of wave that travels and bounces around slow but is high wavelength and is good at penetrating surfaces or media. So just remember, clack is a high frequency and fast sound, thok is a low frequency and slow sound. So now, going into foam. Essentially, foam is an energy converting device. It acts as a barrier or an obstacle the sound wave needs to travel through. So what happens is that the, the loud, high amplitude sound will go through one side of the foam, and while doing so, the mechanical energy from the mechanical wave is then converted into heat through friction. I'm not saying that if you play sounds through foam, you get crazy amount of heat, but rather, it's very low friction and very low amount of heat generated, but the energy is being converted. At the other end of the foam, as the tra sound travels through it, loses energy and comes out as a more quiet sound overall. So, why do I care about this at all? And how does this relate to a keyboard, you say? Well, because of this. On a high level, you just need to remember this. Thinner foams work to reduce higher frequency sounds, so clack. Thicker foams work to reduce low frequency sounds, so thok. The reason for that is to take a look at this chart quickly. This is a NRC or a noise reduction coefficient table. It shows the effectiveness of foams at different thicknesses in reducing sounds of various different frequencies. As you can see, even a thin foam pretty much does the same thing as a thick foam to block out high pitch or clacky sounds. On the other hand, you need to get thicker, and thicker foam in order to effectively block out low frequency or thaki sounds. So you're probably asking, who cares? And what do I need to take away from this? Well, it's simple. If you shove lots of thick foam or layers of foam into your keyboard, you're essentially reducing the deeper end of sound. So you get a small thak. Sorry for all this technicality, but I felt that I can use some of my aerospace engineering background to help provide some science behind why things behave a certain way into this keyboarding hobby. Let me know in the descriptions below if you like this or not. If you don't, I'll stop doing that. Now with that said, let me show you if you keep everything the same and just reduce the amount of foam in the case and remove the play foam also, what happens? So check it out. As you can see, even if you keep everything the same, but just by reducing the thickness of foam, you can start to decrease the clack and increase the thok. So given this, I'm not going to do this for every combination for the Windex, but rather, since I cover the ultimate clack build, let me try to do an ultimate thok build to show you that this one keyboard, the Windex 65, can literally hit both ends of the spectrum. So for this thok build, I'll remove the under PCB foam and only use the thin case foam that is provided. Next, I'll be using the IXPE sheets in this build. The reason for that is that the IXPE sheets doesn't behave like an acoustic foam, rather it's more like a sound modifier. It helps to filter and emphasize certain frequencies and creates a warm, marbly, and what is perceived as typically a deeper sound. So IXPE go. Next, I use some masking tape behind the PCB. Similar to the IXPE, the masking tape also works to emphasize the lower tones and adds more thock overall. 
Now for switches. Yes, I'm using the ubiquitous Ink Black V2s. They are pretty much the quintessential low and deep switch, so I felt it was pretty appropriate for this build. And finally, keycaps. The big boy MT3 caps. Due to the added mass and volume of these keycap profile, the MT3 caps are great at really emphasizing the bass notes in a keyboard build. Plus, I always wondered, when would I ever use this Ski Data themed keycap set? Well, now. On this perfectly black and orange keyboard known as the Windex 65, it actually works out perfectly. Overall, I think this build turned out very unique and fantastic. I just really love how it looks and stands out from the rest of you know my other black keyboard builds that's a little bit more minimal and very businesslike. Since this was a mainly sound shaping video, let's listen to how this thought build really sounds and what the final result was. And that is a crazy Thaki build. Just deep, heavy, and low. I like it. So, I know this video was different from the typical keyboard review. Not to say that the Windex 65 is a bad board or anything like that or boring. In fact, it was actually a great keyboard. The design, the look and feel, and also the sound was overall fantastic. One thing I would like to point out is that for a gasket mounted board, it's not as flexible as some of the other offerings out there, but it does have a small amount of flex. It's on the stiffer side, but still provides a dampened experience overall. In addition, the Windex 65 has this nice cutout for stabs where even with solderable PCBs, you can easily access or to tune or replace without desoldering the entire board. This is a pretty genius idea. I hope that this video helps you with the concept of keyboard sound tuning and hope that it helps you shape your own keyboard, whatever it may be, however you like it. Whether it is a clacky or a thaki build, the final result is entirely up to you and how you shape it. As usual, please like and subscribe and I'll keep pushing more content out in the future. Happy clacking. Or thaking. <laughs>